I have made a few things over the last few months. It has been ages since I have shown you the things I'm actually making, so why not have a little bit of a fashion show? <laughs> So let's kick things off with what I am wearing today. This is the Sea Change Jumpsuit from Pattern Emporium. I absolutely love this jumpsuit. I made it last year. I did film a video of me making it, but the quality of that video is quite shocking. Um, was it last year? Yes, it was like spring, summer 2022. So I made it last year but it needed some improvements. So I have actually made two in the last couple of months. This one is in a stunning Visco Chalet Lawn from Lady McElroy that was in September's luxury So Hilly Jane boxes. And oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I do feel I've paired it with this ready to wear polo neck in this like mustardy color. I do feel like autumn has thrown up on me but I do love that. I'm, I'm, I'm autumn, I'm very autumn, loving autumn. Um, so yes, I made this top for top jumpsuit for the magazine that goes in the boxes. Um, it was a very, very speedy make. It had to be a speedy make. I was under a big um, time deadline. I love it. It is technically, I think it's sort of pitched at being more of a summer, jumpsuit pattern. It's very loose, very floaty. You don't need to have the side ties, but I like the shaping. So it is supposed to be super loose and floaty, um, which does look amazing. But I really struggle with fitting strappy top or strappy bodices and getting it to not gape under my arms. It's a real like sticking point for me but I actually prefer wearing it layered and then you don't notice that it's gaping. I, I probably wouldn't wear it on its own anyway because bra straps and not super comfortable with, the, with my arms out either. So I love it layered up and I think it looks perfect. I've got tights, I've got boots on, so I'm feeling very autumnal. I cut a size 18 at the bust and then graded to a 20 at the hips. There is loads of ease in this, so I probably could have just cut a straight size 18. One thing about this pattern is the, the instructions are so detailed. It's a PDF and the instructions are all, what's, what's the word? You can click on the different bits of the instructions and it takes you to the right page depending on what view of the pattern that you're making. With this pattern, because it's a pull-on jumpsuit, they suggest that if your hips are, I think, more than two or three sizes bigger than your bust, which mine are, that you need a little bit of extra room to get them on and off. So in the back, they've got um, an open back facing option and then you add a little hook and eye um, and that gives you a bit more wiggle room, um, which is great. Not super easy to get, keep getting on and off whenever you need to use the facilities during the day. Um, luckily, I have a very helpful little five-year-old who thinks it's a great job to do up the back of my jumpsuit. <laughs> um, but there we go. So yeah, I love it. It's super, super floaty. It's really easy to make. The only thing is I always struggle with facings around the neckline. They always want to flip over. So I've started top stitching the neck facing down. I'm still not super, super happy with it. I feel like maybe bias binding might be better, but I'm not sure if, if I use bias binding, if there's then gonna be a bit of bulk where the straps go in. Not sure, not sure, but I still absolutely love it. And I have worn this pattern loads, so much. I've worn this jumpsuit so many times. The only thing is I forgot to properly finish the ties. I don't know if you can see. I'll undo it a little bit so you can see. So we've got a scraggly tie because I forgot to do it properly and it's one of those jobs that I just have not gotten around to. So the frayed edge, I mean, this is one of those jobs is literally going to take seconds to just fold it over twice and top stitch that down. But for some reason, I just can't get around to doing it. So I need to get that done. But yeah, this pattern is beautiful. I really recommend it. I will go and put on 
the second version, which I did do some different things with, um, and I will show you that now. Next up, we've got a bit of a two for one situation going on here. I made, let's start here, I made the Anna Allen Anthea blouse, which if you know, it's usually quite a high neck blouse, which I have made before, but I never, I never go for it. I never wear it. And I think it's because I don't like the neckline on me. So I had a look and I noticed that on Anna Allen's blog or her website, she has a hack for scooping out the neckline. So I did that, but it's huge. I can't remember what size I made, but I made the, the size to fit my bust and braided out a little bit at the hips, but it's really, really big. So it does fit. I feel like I need some little like bra straps to keep it in place. Luckily the jumpsuit helps to keep it in place, but yeah, the scoop is very scoopy. I feel a bit like, you know, like a medieval buxom wench in, <laughs> in this outfit. I kind of like that look though. Um, but yeah, I think I love the sleeves. This fabric I picked up at the Stitch Festival back in March. It was from the Fabric Godmother stall. And it is a super, super lightweight cotton. I think it's like a gauze, but it's not a double gauze. I think it's like a single gauze. Makes sense. Um, it's so beautiful and it was so comfortable to wear when it was really, really hot because as I said before, I'm not super confident having my arms out. So this is like the perfect, perfect thing for me because it's so lightweight. <sighs> And I feel like I could breathe in it. So I love it, I do love it. I probably wouldn't wear it without something over the top just because it's very loose and um, feel a bit exposed in it. But paired with my second sea change jumpsuit, I absolutely love it. So this was made in the Lady McElroy linen chambray that came in August's so Hilly Jane boxes, the luxury box. Um, I absolutely love it. So the thing that I did differently was instead of the back open facing, I added buttons and buttonholes to the front straps. These are Pigeon Wishes buttons, Pigeon Wishes buttons um, that I had in my stash. And I think it looks really, really good. I really, really love it. I also added pockets to this one. I didn't add pockets to the last one because I know some people go a bit nuts for pockets and I think I do love a pocket, but it depends on the fabric. This fabric's a medium weight. So if I put things in my pocket, it's not gonna distort the outfit, but in very loose, um, in very lightweight fabrics, I tend not to add pockets because it just, there's no point. It, if you put anything in your pocket, it just distorts the garment completely. So I don't do it. Um, but yeah, this one is gorgeous. I did widen the straps a little bit. Now what I would say, word of caution, if you do something like this with the straps around the side and the straps here, be very, very careful when you are using the facilities, taking things off that straps stay well out of the way. <laughs> we don't want a dangling situation. No, no, no. So otherwise, I absolutely love it. The only thing, I wish I'd made the legs a little bit longer. I think I didn't because I think I ran out of fabric. So they're just a little bit on the ankle swinger side for me. I prefer it if they were just a little bit longer. But I also, I have tights on underneath because it is quite a chilly day and this fabric is clinging to the tights. So just be aware of that. But overall, this whole outfit, this garment is, I absolutely love it. So having said that I don't particularly like high neck garments, I'm now showing you a garment with possibly the highest neckline ever. This is the Tilly and the Buttons Me Marnie, Mabel, Marnie, Marnie dress <laughs> that came out last autumn. This is a style that I didn't think I was going to like, but I absolutely love this is the second one that i have made the first one is probably my favorite version and that i made i did a youtube video for that i think last 
September. Um, and that was in like a mustardy gold Atelier Brunette Viscose. This is a beautiful viscose poplin that was in uh, September's classic So Haley Jane boxes. I did exactly the same thing as I did with the last one. The only thing I did was move the shoulder seam in a little bit. I'm not sure what's happened, but the, the neckline is really, really tight. So much tighter than the last one I did. The last one I did was a little bit wider, so I am a bit like, eh. I might have to just go and sort of add a bit more length to the button loop at the back. Because yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strangly one, this one. But otherwise, I do really, really love it. I think I might need to, Lengthen it a little bit at the back. I feel like my my derriere lifts the back of the fabric up a little bit um, So I might need to add a little bit of extra length Just at the back. I don't know. Yeah, just like scoop it down a little bit perhaps just for a bit of extra coverage um, But otherwise I do really really love it. The only thing and it's okay because I tend to, I'm a very cold person, so I wear layers anyway. As you can see in the footage of me wearing it and, you know, modeling, I've got a top on underneath. Um, normally I would wear a vest top, but I haven't got one here with me. So I've just got a regular top on because where the seam is above my bust and then has these gathers here, because I am quite busty, if I don't have a top underneath, the fabric kind of falls into my cleavage, which looks a bit bizarre. So I do feel that I have to wear a vest top or something underneath because it's got lovely, long, poofy sleeves and I would wear this in the autumn and winter anyway. I would put on a long sleeved thermal vest underneath because I am an eternally cold person. Um, so it's fine, but because of the the button loop and the open bit at the back, you can then see the fabric of the top underneath, which isn't the desired look, but I don't really care. So, all in all, it's a great pattern and I'm really happy with this one. <laughs> Alrighty, next garment pattern is the Tilly and the Buttons SD co -Ord. So that is trousers and top, the fabric and the pattern. So the fabric was in the classic box and the pattern was in the luxury box and that was in July. And we did a Tilly and the Buttons collaboration for the So Haley Jane boxes. It was amazing. This fabric is so beautiful. It's a viscose twill. It has the most gorgeous feel and drape to it. The colors are incredible. The trousers, I've made two trousers. I've only got the one pair here to show you. The other pair I didn't bring with me because it's the same pattern and the same type of fabric. The trousers I love and I absolutely lived in them over the summer when it was really, really hot, paired with different tops. They are a great wide leg trouser, um, but they come, this is gonna sound a bit, um, too much information maybe, but they come up high enough up my, towards the middle <laughs> um, that I don't feel that I need to put anti-chafing shorts on underneath. I do have thighs that touch and chafe, especially in the summer. So I often need to put those lovely little shorts on underneath. Um, but when it's really, really hot, you don't want extra layers. It's a, it's a real catch 22. But with these trousers, I didn't really feel that I needed them. They were so comfortable. They do come up very, very high, which I don't know if it's, I don't know if it hits me on the most flattering part of my waist, um, but I love them anyway, absolutely. I just wear them all the time. One thing to make sure you do if you make the trousers is to make sure you sew a label in the back because it's really hard if you don't sew a label in the back to figure out which is the front and which is the back of your trousers. So make sure you do that. The top, I don't love. I'm not a fan of the top. It's not my style anyway. Like I said before, I feel like I want to put something underneath or put a cardigan over the top. It doesn't fit me great. I think a lot of people had this issue where it's sort of a bit gapy here. 
Um, but I do love the whole faux jumpsuit. So I think I would definitely make the trousers again with a different top to tuck in because I love the whole, yeah, the faux jumpsuit. I think it's a, such a genius, genius idea. Um, but yeah, the top is not for me. It, yeah, just doesn't really fit great. And yeah, just not, it's not my style, but the trousers I love. Okay, just two more, three more garments left to show you. These are the Waves and Wild heyday dungarees they are a firm favorite in the sewing community i have made four pairs plus two kids versions which if you've watched my videos before you will know i made two pairs for my daughter and she never wore them <laughs> hey ho what can you do um i made this out of the vintage cotton that went into august's classic boxes, So Holy Jane boxes. Keep talking about So Holy Jane boxes. If you don't know, I run So Holy Jane, which is a monthly sewing subscription box company. So every month I send boxes, beautiful boxes, all curated around a theme of fabric and patterns and notions and sewing gifts. So I will leave a link below. Go and check out the website and have a little look for yourself. But yes, this was in the classic box. It is a called a vintage cotton. So it's 100% cotton, but it has a sort of a textured feel. So it kind of looks like linen and it's really, really comfortable to wear. This is another outfit that I wore all the time over the summer holidays. I mean, we didn't have the, the greatest weather over the summer, but we did have a few hot days. And yeah, these I wear all the time. I actually find dungarees really hard to wear when it starts getting colder. I just, I haven't found a coat or a jacket that works with dungarees. I just think every coat or jacket that I own looks really bizarre with dungarees. I don't know if anyone else finds this at all. Um, and you know, I could obviously put a nice thick jumper underneath, but if it's raining and I need a coat, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't tend to reach for them so much once it gets colder. Um, yeah, I've made these so many times. I made, I can't remember the sizings, is it? I think it goes up to a triple XL, which is what I made, the largest size. I do want to, I think if I make any more, I don't know if I'll make another pair, um, but I need to somehow narrow the legs a little bit. The legs are a bit baggy. Um, it's, but it fits my hips, so I, yeah, I need to try and figure out the best way of doing that. But otherwise, I absolutely love it. I added this little faux leather patch from So Pretty So Mindful that says Me Made to kind of emulate a certain well-known ready-to-wear dungaree brand. And I think it looks really, really cool. I absolutely love it. Right. I have one garment to put on to show you and one thing that I have made for my daughter to show you and then we are done. Okay, this is my latest, most recent make. I feel like I want a little vest top underneath it. It's a little bit cleavagey. Um, although I'm sure my husband doesn't have an issue with that at all. This fabric was in the most recent, the October So Hilly Jane Luxury Boxes. It is an absolutely gorgeous viscose jersey. It's got this like marbled effect. It's like there's black, there's purple, there's blue, there's teal, and then this like gold, but because it's speckled, it looks like it actually shimmers and it is so, so beautiful and such a dream to work with as well. And this is the Simple Sew Lena wrap dress, which is a tried and true pattern for me. I have made it, this is my third one, and each one gets a little bit better. This one is just perfect. It fits me so nicely. I feel quite sexy in it. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Now the box did come with a wrap dress pattern, the Wonder Wrap Dress by Wardrobe by Me. But I had already started making this before I had decided on that pattern. So there's a couple there. So, and I have seen some people make the wonder out of this fabric and it looks absolutely stunning. So yeah, it's a great, great fabric for wrap dresses. But yeah, 
I feel very, very sexy in it, I must admit. Um, it's, yeah, lovely long sleeves, perfect for this time of year. It's a pattern that I could make time and time again. One thing that is a little bit strange, so the bodice is fully lined, it has a waistband, and that is also lined, and because it's a wrap, you end up with one, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, six layers of fabric in one seam, which is really, really bulky and chunky. Once, so I graded the seams and it's fine and you can't notice it when you're wearing it at all, but when you're sewing, if you're new to sewing, it's, yeah, it feels really, really bulky. Just watch out for that. Otherwise, I absolutely adore this pattern. The last thing I want to show you then is this super cute dress that I have been making for my daughter Mia. She is five, um, but she's quite tall for a five-year-old, so she's closer to sort of six in terms of sizing. This is the festival dress by Tada Patterns, which is a really cute kids pattern brand. I have made this dress before and I love it because there are different options. So the one that I made before um, was in a viscose and it had a little extra like ruffle detail at the shoulder and I made it with a gathered skirt. Because this very cute Halloween cotton poplin, I do have some of this left on the outlet shop, which I'll link below if you are interested. It's got these cute little ghosts and rainbows and it's so, so beautiful, kind of retro, retro ghosts. Because it's a cotton, I decided to take away the ruffles on the sleeves. I made the back a bit more modest, so there's different options for the back. So you can see we've got buttons here, then a waist, a, um, elasticated waistband. So there's like this back gap here, which she thinks is very cool. Um, but yeah, the one other one I did was had a narrower strip. There's also finishing it with a bias binding. Um, and there's different options for the front as well for like a spliced bodice. And then this one I did a circle skirt. So there's a lot of fabric still to hem. I haven't hemmed it yet. It's been dropping. Um, so I need to figure out how to measure that properly on a five-year-old that can't stay still. Hmm. Um, it's, so, it's just so cute. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how cute this fabric is and this whole dress. I'm hoping she is gonna wear it. We are going out, it's half term at the moment, and on Thursday, which will actually have already happened by the time you've seen this video, we are going with some of her friends to, there's a cafe locally to us that's hosting a little Halloween afternoon tea for kids, and there's crafts and pumpkin carving and things like that, so I'm very, I'm very excited, and I hope, I hope she'll want to wear it. She might not, she might want to wear like an actual Halloween outfit which is fine if she does. I had fun making this. I actually made this and I have filmed like a reel and I might put it up on YouTube short so you can see it as well. I had a Saturday morning all to myself last weekend and I, yeah, did some of this. So that was lovely. Right, that was a bit of a bumper makes video for you. It's been a long time since I actually did a makes video. So there was a lot to cover. But then I don't feel like I've been, you know, sewing up a huge storm. So I do know some people sew all the time and make hundreds and hundreds of things. That's not me. This is literally the first thing I think I made was the, the Tilly and the Buttons, the SD Coord, and that was all the way back in June. So June, July, August, September, October, we're talking five months worth of makes there. So not bad going, I don't think. Anyway, thank you so much everyone for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you next week. Bye.